Let's bring in American David Marshall Fox. We talked with him last week when he was struggling to get out of Afghanistan. I see you now there, just outside Boston. You told us last week that you'd been hit by a rubber fan belt by the Taliban as you tried to get into the airport. Tonight, we are happy to report that you are back home, safe with your family outside Boston. Thanks so much for joining us, David. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, welcome back to the States. What's it like to be back on American soil? Um, it's really, it's, you know, it, you know, it's, it's obviously a, you know, a big relief to be here. Um, you know, it was an extremely stressful, um, uh, you know, one week where we were in Kabul, um, when the Taliban were in control. Um, I personally was, you know, uncertain about how much risk we actually faced from the Taliban, but there was a lot of pressure from from my family members, from my friends, um, and from uh, officials that I knew in the U.S. government who said that, you know, potentially, you know, things could get much worse. And the, the situation was really too unpredictable for me to be there safely with my family. After all the chaos and the violence that you endured at the airport, what was it like going back and having to get through onto that evacuation flight? It must have been terrifying. So. My experience being successfully evacuated was much different from my first attempt to get into the Kabul airport. I was contacted by an Afghan American friend who had received an email telling him to be at the Ministry of Interior, uh, Southeast Gate, between 10 p.m. and midnight to be evacuated. I had not received this email, but um, I was fairly certain that I was qualified with my family members to also be evacuated. We rushed to do our packing and we headed off to the Ministry of Interior. And when we got to the Ministry of Interior, we realized that this was not like our other experience trying to get into the airport. In this case, the Taliban were in control of this Ministry of Interior gate. And what they were doing was vetting um, the, the individuals who had been contacted by the U.S. government to be there. So basically, this was a situation where the U.S. government had finally realized that they could not complete the evacuation of U.S. citizens without the Taliban's assistance. So these two entities, the U.S. government and the Taliban, had coordinated um, with uh, U.S. passport holders and green card holders and immigrant visa holders to be at this gate where the Taliban was actually conducting the screening of documents to see who was eligible. You were gone only 24 hours before uh, two suicide bombers took the lives of 13 servicemen and scores of Afghan nationals. What was your reaction seeing uh, the suicide bombing there at a gate close to where you had been just 24 hour, 48 hours before? I had been to those gates with my family members you know, a couple days before I was evacuated. So I knew how dangerous it was. Those gates were too dangerous um, <clears throat> for the exact reason, um, for the exact reason that we saw in the last 24 hours, where people were, were vulnerable to, you know, suicide attacks, and also where the Taliban themselves were extremely, you know, reckless with their firearms. I don't think the Taliban had the intention to actually you know, kill, um, you know, people who were trying to enter the airport, but they certainly were extremely, you know, brutal with their methods of crowd control. David, you lived in Afghanistan for nine years. Your wife is Afghan. You clearly know both Americans and Afghan nationals who may not be able to get out at this point or, or even before the deadline. What are you hearing from people tonight? Give us a sense of the desperation in the final hours before the deadline. Even um, some of my employees who, you know, I, I, my company was just a small agency that, that produced photo and video content and did some market research. But my employees were terrified that just working with an American would mean that they were, you know, marked for, for, for death by a Taliban kill squad. You know, th this is what they believe. Now, we don't know what's going to happen, but we do know that the people, that, the Afghans that were left behind, are in mortal terror right now. David Marshall, thank you so much for your time and for joining us tonight, and welcome home. Sure, thank you so much. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.